Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review. Got the hat on again, look different colour this time. Oh, the man of the man of merry faces. Yes. Anyway. So today we're back on the Yorkshire series. Woo! Yes, we haven't done a Yorkshire beer since uh the last time. And uh today we're on one I, I, it's, it's a York brewery apparently. And uh, since 1996, and it's the Yorkshire Terrier, Yorkshire Amber. But how many times you can get the word Yorkshire or York and that into the actual front label? Because we've got Yorkshire Amber Ale, Yorkshire Terrier is the name of it. It's a York Brewery. Oh, I think they could have probably done another more kind of couple of Yorkshires and a couple of uh, other Y shaped words. <laughs> but anyway, they're, they're proud of it. And saying that, the Yorkshire Terrier. My, I had a mate when I was at school. Well, I suppose he was a mate well, after school as well and things like that. But obviously, over the years, we lost contact. Unfortunately, he passed away um, a few months ago, which was a shame and, and definitely way, way too early. And uh, he was a really nice guy, a guy into his kind of fishing and shooting, which was what I was into at the time as well um, but yeah he had this Yorkshire Terrier and uh, it's called Toby and uh, this dog could be a nasty wee bastard so it could I mean you could use the C word for this dog it was that much of it you know just typical yappy grumpy wee Yorkshire Terrier so it was wee Yorkie called Toby and uh you used to go around and you'd ring the doorbell and you'd hear it straight at the door, <laughs> you know, barking as if it was basically a fucking Doberman, that's all it is. And uh, of course, Craig would open the door and his dad would open the door and this dog would just lunge out, you know, at you, lunge out at you. And uh, I used to get itself so overly excited. And uh, one day I went there and uh, rang the doorbell and Craig answered and uh, the dog just basically just flew out the door, really flew out the door and it was uh, all basically, you know, jaws going, getting all blue and animated as it's flying through the air towards me. I mean, it actually quite liked me. Well, it liked me as it would like any other person, which it fucking hated everybody it's seen. Um, I'd, uh, it kind of... I kind of moved to the side and it just kind of dumped itself off. But as it dumped itself off, I don't know what happened, but it must have banged its head and its fucking eye popped out. <laughs> and we're like, oh, you fucker. <laughs> Seriously. And, uh, yeah. Well, let's just say that was an interesting afternoon. It, was, it wasn't an afternoon we thought we would be spending. Me and Craig holding this fucking little vicious bastard down, trying to fucking pop its eye back in. We managed to get it fucking back in because, obviously, we thought, well, I'm not going to tell my fucking mum that fucking Doug's eyes popped out and that. I don't think anybody wants you to take a trip down to the vet, but yes. And, uh, yeah, Toby, the, the Jack Russell, so... Jack Russell, sorry, the Yorkshire Terrier. What's in Jack Russell? Jack Russell was basically Jack, the evil bastard. That was my dog. Well, I think it was the family's dog. What a horrible dog that was. But anyway, <laughs> there's a trend, as you notice, with dogs here in my life. Um... For not being dry humped by them, basically just vicious grumpy bastard. But yeah, Toby was a bit of a vicious grumpy bastard, and uh, yeah, some dog it was, so it was. But yeah, I remember that day when the eye popped out, I thought, no, here we fucking go. Seriously, for fuck's sake. And the, dog's the problem was, was the case that the dog was trying to get back up, trying to work out what the fuck was going on, that type of stuff, but really fucking, because it always did everything 100 miles an hour, especially through the house, you know. It couldn't walk about the house, it was off, you know, like a bear with a burnt arse, but yeah, so that's when I see with Yorkshire Terry, it just reminds me of bloody Toby, my mate's dog and that bloody eye popping it, bloody thing, but anyway, is there any spiel in the back? Not really, oh, oh, no, no, there is, oh, we go, Yorkshire Terrier is a single hop, amber ale, and a legend throughout Yorkshire, UK grown Challenger hops blend with a dash of crystal malt to offer robust notes of fruit with a clean bitter finish. Mm. Sounds okay. 
Yorkshire Brewery, since its founding in, or founding in 1996, York Brewery has poured its heart and soul into brewing fine handcrafted ales that are enjoyed far and wide. There we go. And this is another one that's sold in Sweden because it's got all the distributors for Sweden. There seems to be quite a lot of uh, British ales that are being distributed in Sweden. So it contains barley and uh, and that's it really. So that's the only kind of allergen. So it's 4.2%, 500 ml. I think it was roughly, again, just under two pound a bottle. To be totally honest. Did I hold it up? I did do it, didn't I? There we go. Right, shall we crack it open and see what it's like? Woohoo! Gonna watch a movie after this. Ah, write in your comments what movie you think I'm gonna be watching. And it's not porn, by the way, it's a proper feature film. Why does it, why does it make porn movies anyway? Uh -huh. Longer than 10 minutes. Yeah? What, what, what's the need for it? <sighs> anyway. But yes, write in the comments what you think movie I'm going to watch. And what do you think of movie? Oh, also, what type of movies do you think I may be into? That's if you give a shit. You probably don't, so. If you don't, don't bother your ass. There you go. For people in the broadcast, I'm I'm still trying to get a, a pour without spilling it all over myself. Because it just was l lurching out of the bottle there. Right, so there we go. About one figure head. It's very light amber, and it's, it's a slight mistiness to it. It's not 100% clear. It's not hazy, as they say. Or cloudy, as I would say. Uh, but there is a slight mist to it. There is, it's not fully clear. But yeah. But yeah, I would say it's, it's quite light. I've seen quite a lot, a lot of darker amber ales. But yes, I would say it's fairly light in colour. Smell-wise, I'm getting malt. Not really getting much else, but going by what they, they were describing it, there isn't much in it anyway, but it's a single hop. It's crystal malts. But yeah, I'm just getting very light, malty aromas, a little bit of grain and that's it. Nothing else. So, let's see what it tastes like. Light bitterness at the back there, yeah, there's a bit of bitterness in the aftertaste. Again, quite light. You're also getting a bit of tannings as well, you're getting that slight kind of stewed tea in the aftertaste as well. Um, strange that I noticed the aftertaste more than I did to the front of the mouth in that first sip. You usually expect the, the front of the mouth to bang you when you get that as a, as a first sip. And then you might need, need a couple of additional sips to really kind of work out the mid tongue and the aftertaste. But no, this is this beer seems to be more about the aftertaste than anything else. Yeah, I would probably say the front of the mouth is almost non-existent because of that. It's really all about the kind of aftertaste and, and building up to it. it. Was probably the best way of describing this beer. Overall, it's actually great. It's actually not too bad. It's a, uh, it's a simple beer. It's not a complex beer, but the simple flavours that are there that I'm detecting, with a good level of intensity, and they work quite well with each other. And yeah, not every beer has to be complex. Sometimes doing a, a simple brew, a simple recipe, uh, can achieve so much more. And especially, in it's, it's an amber ale, but it is kind of uh, brewed a bit like a bitter, to a certain extent. And uh, 
because I can have session ability to it. There's, you know, there's some nice, easy, interesting flavours. There's the, the bitterness, the tanning, you're getting that light malt. So you're getting some nice flavours there. You get a little bit of underlying sweetness. So you're getting all this kind of stuff there. But overall, it's quite light as well, but not light as in lacking body, light as in just there isn't too many flavours there to kind of, how would you say, kind of make the drinking experience a bit more difficult or a bit more challenging and things like that. You're not searching or hunting for flavours. There's a few kind of core flavours there, but they're there front and centre, easy to identify. It just makes it quite sessionable from that point of view. Overall, the feel of the beer is quite sessionable. Which is what you probably expect to a certain degree from a kind of lighter amber ale anyway. But there is a trend of late, especially in the, the kind of southern breweries of trying to kind of make more complex amber ales and make them, you know, more complex, lots of different flavours, a bit more challenging to drink, a bit more richness and body and all that. And I feel that it's just kind of missing a bit of the amber ale. Amber ales, yes, are usually more complex if you compare them to bitters and things like this, whereas this one's a bit lighter and I'd say it's kind of closer to a bitter than it would be uh, a kind of standard amber ale from that point of view. But overall, just actually quite a, quite a nice beer. It's just, uh, from my opinion initially, it's just, yeah, it's just some nice flavours there. It's very drinkable. So let's break down the flavours. Start off, you're getting light malt, uh, a little bit underlying sweetness, very light green at the front of the mouth. Moves on to the kind of mid tongue, and the flavours are kind of basically almost the same, but in some ways they're just kind of slightly ramping up a bit. So the malt gets a little bit more in the mid tongue, the green gets a little bit more, and the sweetness it just roughly stays about the same, but it feels like it's just starting to kind of build up to a crescendo. And that crescendo is the aftertaste, whereas just really getting a little bit more malt in the aftertaste and you are at the front of the mouth. You feel that there's a bit of tanning, a bit of stewed tea there, so you're getting that kind of slightly um, flavour sensation. And on top of that, it kind of links well with the bitterness, because there's a bit of bitterness there. But the way the bitterness is, it's not overly bitter, but it just works well with this kind of slightly tanning flavours. The underlying sweetness is still there from front to back, hasn't really changed. And uh, yeah, it just kind of slightly, as it dissipates, the flavour dissipates, so the malt dissipates, the sweetness dissipates. The bitterness and tanning, they're the kind of last things to kind of dissipate in the aftertaste. And yeah, you're just getting this slightly ever kind of nice overall It's, it's, it's kind of strange because the tannings and the bitterness are really kind of really kind of joined together. And it just feels like the aftertaste just reminds me of like a really good strong brewed tea. That's if you like tea, I like tea. Um, being British, of course. But obviously from people outside of the UK, we like that. We like good strong tea. Like Yorkshire tea is a, is a good brand for kind of strong tea flavours. And a good strong brewed tea in all our family. We like good strong brewed tea. My parents always did. It had to be made in a pot, none of this bloody tea bag in the cup. It's got to be made in a pot and get a good chance to kind of infuse all that type of stuff. So, what we like is we like that kind of tanning, slightly bitter finish to a good cup of tea. And you're getting this from this beer, just getting that kind of nice finish. The last flavour is just that slightly kind of stewed bitter tea flavour which is nice for me. It might not be for other people but I like that. 
and that's probably one of the reasons why I enjoy better so much because I do like that flavor profile so if it's done right then yes it, it just kind of floats my boat from that point of view oh he's floating his boat anyway oh just as another kind of highlight um there will be some beer news coming up so I'll be doing it this week now, I don't know when this video is going to come out um it will probably come out a week from now because this is a Sunday. Now this is Sunday the 16th of July. So this will be coming out next Sunday. So that will be 23rd, if I'm right. So we're off a bit of 23rd. So yes, there will be, I will be doing a, a beer news over this week and I will probably be releasing it more at the end of the week. Biggest problem is time. There's also been a lot of different news in the beer news and I've been trying to kind of balance it out to get some more interesting beer news coming from around the world and not just the UK so there's some good interesting stuff from the UK but also some good stuff from the US and also from Europe so that will be coming out and uh, I don't know whether to do it over one video or over two videos depends how long it's going to be if it's going to be too long then I might just split it into two videos so I'll probably do two beer, new two beer news videos this month because I felt it was a bit imbalanced to do it. So this will be to cover kind of June and July. I just thought that during June there was a little bit of imbalance that was maybe just too much British orientated and I just want to kind of make it a bit more interesting for everybody that's listening outside of the UK as well. So that will be coming up. But overall, yeah, I actually quite like this beer. So I do. But what would I give it out of 10? Right. Well, like I said, it's a simple beer. But the flavours that are there are a good level. And they're nice and clean. Which is good. It's got a nice bitterness. Not overly bitter, but it's got a nice bitterness. For an amber ale, it's got a nice bitterness. And uh, again, it's just nice to have an amber ale that's not too busy. I'm not trying to pack too many flavours in and uh, missing the point because sometimes they make it too complex and yeah, it's too busy, there's too many flavours and you're finding it difficult to find, you know, to identify the different flavours because they're just no longer clean and clear enough to basically uh, identify. So it's nice to have something that's not so busy and it does make it more sessionable, more drinkable. And it has the finish that I like, like I said, it's got the kind of tea, you know, bitterness finish, which is nice for me, it might not be nice for other people, but I like it. So it just, again, it ticks that box for me. Uh, I would normally say it's kind of lacking, it needs a bit more in the front of the mouth, but it's, I imagine it's kind of, wedge shaped so it starts off and slowly builds until it gets to the aftertaste where we kind of everything kind of comes together that gives you a good finish so normally i would say well you maybe i'd want maybe a bit more at the front of the mouth but this time i'm not going to say that it just kind of works the way it is i don't know if it would work as good i think it would probably create a slight imbalance whereas you've got a good finish there and i think if you had a bit too much in the excuse me, the front of the mouth might take the edge off the aftertaste and the finish of the beer. So for that, I would probably just recommend that it stays the way it is and doesn't really need any more in the front of the mouth and the mid tongue, the flavours in the mid tongue is just basically starting to intensify and more of a kind of crescendo at the at the end so it's kind of building up so yeah out of 10 this is a strange one Hmm. 
Look, that is actually quite nice. Um, I'm going to give this a six and a half out of ten. It's quite a simple beer, especially for an amber ale. But it's a simple beer that's actually brewed quite nice. And uh, the flavour profiles are nice. But it's very drinkable and very sessionable, especially from my outlook and what I like, flavour-wise. And also, it's just something a bit different. It's a bit of a change following the kind of trains that you're getting down in the kind of southern parts of England, where they are, it's like a, a race that who can make the most complex and uh, flavour-packed amber ale, which all these different dry fruity flavours and uh, you know they're trying to add flavour profiles that you maybe associate more with darker beers that they're trying to jam them into an amber ale and things like that and uh, I, I think they're over egging the pudding as we say in the UK and uh, it's just nice and refreshing to have something that's a bit more simplistic and a bit of a more simple outlook. And yeah, for me, it just makes it a bit more refreshing and a bit more interesting just because it's not trying to be something else. It's not trying to steal flavors that are more associated with other types of beer and packing it in to a different style to try and make themselves look wonderful or interesting or progressive or groundbreaking or whatever, it's just a good, honest, simple amber ale with a nice bit of tones in the finish. So yeah, six and a half out of ten, roughly about two pound a bottle, I think we're just slightly under two pound a bottle. It's uh, 4.2%, the last wee bit out of it. 500ml bottle, thanks for watching, cheers, and bye for now.